Hello everybody, my name is Memo and this is my YouTube channel. This is a place where I will geek out essentially and talk about houseplants and different types of houseplant, their care, and also a few tips and tricks that I've learned over my way over the time by just actually keeping some of these houseplants. As a new YouTube creator, it really does help when I get interaction from you guys. So if you like what you see, drop a like down below. If you want to see more content like this, do remember to subscribe. And yeah, let's get into it. Today's topic is something that one of my followers on Instagram actually requested, which I thought was a great little subject that I think I've seen a lot of people talk about this. And it's actually different types of browning on houseplant leaves, how to recognize them and also how to deal with them. So in front of me, I've got an Epipremnum and Joy. And this is one that I wanted to show as an example, and I'll see if I can put a close up as well. This is possibly one of the most common brownings that you will see in most houseplants, specifically variegated houseplants. This will generally be something that you will see almost exclusively on variegated houseplants. And this is generally on the variegated section when you will see leaf burn, where that variegated section is browning. And I have talked about this before, I think mainly on my Instagram rather than on here, but with the variegated sections, large sectoral white variegations like you'll see here, it just means that the leaf isn't photosynthesizing, so that leaf is sacrificing the variegated section because it's sapping energy and it's not actually providing any nutrition to the plant because it's not green, it can't photosynthesize. So this is quite, quite normal when you get large sectoral white sections. You'll get this with variegated albo monsteras, you'll get it with Thai constellations, you'll get it with this enjoy as well. It's usually when it's quite large white sectoral variegation. Nothing to worry about, generally speaking. What I have found is that when you're bringing a plant home from a garden center, from a plant store, their humidity and their environment is ideal for these plants. And they also don't spend that long there. Usually those plants are probably only there for a bit after they've come in from plant nurseries and you can't always replicate it. And almost without fail, when plants like this come into most people's households and they've got regular household humidity, the lighting conditions might be different, you'll get a lot more of this browning. However, one thing I have found is with my plants, the longer they're in my environment, in my home's humidity and in the lighting location that I would place them, the more chance there is that the newer leaves will actually delay that browning on the white variegated sections for as much as possible. You can't get rid of it entirely. It's it's a sad fact that you will just have to deal with in terms of your large sectoral variegated plants, but it kind of makes sense. Essentially, it's the plant trying to survive. So I wouldn't stress too, too much about it. If you don't like the look of it, you can cut it off. I don't usually bother doing that. It doesn't annoy me as much. So it's up to you. It's a personal preference. Now for the other types of browning, I'm hopefully going to be able to add a picture somewhere here and um, you'll be able to see it during the time when I'm talking about that specific type of browning. So starting off, you can see in this picture, this is one of the other common types of browning that you will see within leaves and that will be at the very leaf tip. And that is usually, and if I'm not mistaken, the example that I should be using for this one is a prayer plant. So the Marantaceae family, so Stromanthi, Tenanthi, and um, Calathea, and the Maranta plants as well. So they are, they love humidity, they love having constantly moist soil, and they really, really, really do not like the chemicals and salts that can be found in most areas tap water. So usually when you see that browning, it is salt deposit that's happening from tap water and it's being watered and it's going through the plant and it's ending at the very end of the leaf. There's not a lot of things that you can do to get around this other than potentially using things like rainwater, distilled water or reverse osmosis water. I have seen a difference. I've got a reverse osmosis system because I am a bit of a plant geek. Um, but I've seen that only when I've moved it to that water. I was trying Brita filtered water for a very long period of time. And in my experience, it reduced some of that browning at the end of the leaf, but it didn't get rid of it altogether. So just bear that in mind for the average person who just wants to bring a prayer plant into their house because they love the look of it and they don't want to mess around with RO water or reverse osmosis water or, or um, 
things like rainwater or even distilled water, you're going to get some browning. Just be aware of that. Come to terms with it. And if that's something that's really going to bug you, but you also don't want to give it a different type of water, then maybe try a different type of plant. Try something like philodendron or an epipremnum. Usually you won't get that problem with those plants. They tend to be a bit hardier when it comes to the salts in tap water. At least that's what I found in my experience. And that's obviously a sweeping generalization. It won't be all of those plants within those genera, but the majority of them that you can find readily in most plant stores should be fine. The other example that I wanted to bring up, and this is something that I have struggled with for a long period of time, and I'm going to be very honest with some of my plants, specifically my dragon scale alocasia. So the alocasia beginda. Again, I might not be pronouncing that wrong uh, correctly. I do apologize. But um, this is leaf edema, and you will usually see it at the back of the leaves. I'll see if I can maybe find a secondary picture of my fiddle leaf fig, because that's another one that tends to suffer from this quite a bit. That one doesn't have this look at the back of the leaves where the cells are burst essentially that's what edema is it's an oversaturation of the cells and they burst um, that one you tend to get red dots on the new leaves as they emerge and there's a lot of people that worry that it might be bacterial or something like that it is just edema i'm probably not the best person to advise when it comes to edema because i've tried to do research over the last two years and i've not found an awful lot that was useful other than the fact that some places are saying it's overwatering, some places are saying it's underwatering. And there's nothing that is kind of talked about when it comes to what to do to avoid it, what to do to minimise it. So I don't know. This is definitely one of those things that if you know how to deal with edema, please, 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 please drop it in the comments down below. I would love to know what you do and if you've had any success with it as well. I, at this point, I'm willing to try anything. So that is edema. That's plant edema. That's bursting of the cells. I find with mine, it doesn't matter what I've tried, if I've tried to keep the water uh, moist on a regular basis, it still gets it. Like, as I said, the dragon scale is probably the worst example, and I think I'm probably using one of their one of those leaves as an example for this. And um, yeah, it's even when I let the plant fully dry out and then watered it, I'd still get it. So I, I'm not entirely sure how you would deal with that necessarily. The next one is bacterial. So bacterial infection that you can see on the leaf. And in this situation, it generally means that bacteria has somehow managed to enter the plant. Usually it's through the soil. I would recommend at that point potentially considering repotting the plant. Just bear in mind that if quite a large amount of the plant, you can see um, that bacterial infection on quite a few of the leaves, doing something like repotting it is quite stressful for the plants so there is a small risk that you might lose the plant if it's only on one leaf one or two leaves and you've got quite a full plant it shouldn't necessarily be a problem it should be okay but just make sure that when you repot you try to get rid of as much of that soil that was already in the plant and also just make sure that um, you're disturbing the roots as little as possible maybe another thing that you could potentially do things like bacteria and fungus tend to thrive in really wet damp conditions if you can afford to do it and it's not something really really sensitive in terms of a house plant after you get rid of all the soil that's existing um, and before you repot it into the new soil maybe let it dry out maybe put a fan on it for like half an hour or something or let it sit somewhere out it won't kill the plant unless it's something as delicate as maybe a fern or something like that which hopefully you shouldn't be getting any issues like that on a fern i don't think i've ever experienced that on a fern it tends to be more on aroids, so philodendrons, anthuriums, and stuff like that. Let it dry, let the roots dry out. It won't kill the plant, it won't harm it. And then when you put it into the new soil, then drench it fully through. Because the one thing that bacteria and fungi generally don't like is that kind of overexposure to air and dry situations. That will usually kill them off quite quickly. At least in my experience and some of the not limited scientific background that I have, that should help. The other thing is, the other type of browning is uh, fungal browning, and usually you will get this a bit more on begonias. Begonias tend to have quite a bit of an issue when it comes to fungal browning on the leaves. With most begonias, the way that you can get around this is having them within a really humid environment, because a lot of the begonias do appreciate humidity. Some more than others, the more rare begonias, the more collectors begonias tend to really want either a terrarium or something like that but just make sure that there's some form of airflow because the bacterial infection that you will get, sorry, the fungal infection that you will get within them is because of stagnating air essentially around 
the plants, especially with high humidity. So make sure that you're circulating that air. If you've already got the fungal infection, if it's really, really bad on the leaf, maybe cut off that leaf so it doesn't spread to the leaves around it. And if you also want to take the extra step, there are fungal leaf sprays that you can get even on Amazon. Basically, if you do a quick search, you should be able to find one of those. And the last type of browning that I'm going to talk about is the natural browning that you will get with leaves when they are coming to the end of their lives. It's the type of browning where the leaf would have gone yellow, this will be the older leaves will go yellow, and then it will brown off and die off. And that just basically means that the plants then got more energy to pump into the new leaves, which is good. It means that those leaves are going away, they serve their purpose. So yeah, that's a bit more on the browning. Another type of browning that you would get is mechanical damage to the leaf. So this is usually when you've got a leaf and it's sitting on the side maybe of a shelf or something like that and you keep knocking into it, you keep knocking into it, that leaf eventually will brown at that area where it's getting a lot of kind of friction or movement. It's nothing to worry about necessarily. The way that you can reduce this or minimize this or make sure it doesn't happen is make sure that your plant isn't getting banged or it's not touching somewhere. Um, that might not always be the case because the location that you've got it might be the best lighting location for that plant and it just might mean that you'll have one leaf that will have a bit of a brown mark because of that mechanical damage. It's nothing to worry about but that is what a mechanical damage looks like on a leaf. I hope you've enjoyed and hopefully I shall see you again soon. As I've mentioned before if you've got any questions or comments please drop them in the comments down below. I'd love to have this conversation with you guys and yeah enjoy the rest of your day and thanks. Bye!